Hi guys and welcome to Water Wednesday. I thought rather than just talking about things I read on the internet or talking about statistics, we'd go out to Lake Ray Roberts and that's where we are today. This is pretty much the epicenter, the, the nearly the center of the bullseye for what's left of the drought in Texas. Uh, it happens right here to be right here in North Texas on the lake that I fished a whole lot on and guide on. And uh, this spot is actually, you'll see on the bottom the GPS coordinates for this spot, but this is a really a a hot spot for bass. I've caught five pounders here last year. Um, carp and everything else. In the past though, uh, I brought a fly rod to kind of show you where we are in the drought. Uh, this is a nine foot fly rod and if you subtract one foot off the top, about that much right there, that's where the water is when this lake, Lake Ray Roberts here in North Texas is up to capacity. So the conservation pool is about right there, uh, and of course we're a long way from that. This lake is part of the Trinity River Basin chain of uh, watersheds. It's not a natural lake, it's a man-made lake created in the late 1980s. And uh, right now with the drought, we're, this lake still pumps water down the way because what Texas is about when it comes to its watersheds. Number one is water supply for exploding population. And number two is for flood control. Kind of interchangeable sometimes. And number three is recreation. And uh, there's nobody here today. Even though it's February and it's kind of cold and windy, there's nobody out here. So with nine feet or eight, basically eight feet of water gone, heading towards nine. Um, we continue to let off water. We're going to go to another site and I'm going to show you where the water continues to flow down the Trinity River to the next lake, which is Louisville, or some people call it Lake Dallas, kind of interchangeably. But uh, this is Lake Ray Roberts. You can see why I was in no hurry uh, and I'm not feeling kind of inspired to uh, go out on a limb and buy a flat skiff when it's so dangerous out here. Plenty, plenty of stumps everywhere and uh, this lake shows no signs of stopping its decline. You know, another, another huge aspect is when I look out on this water, it's almost perfectly clear here where it never used to be that way. So we've got a huge, and all around my feet are shells, zebra mussels. They're, all, they're already starting to pile up along the water line. So, you know, we've got a combination of problems here that are unique to this lake. I believe that because the lake is declining in, in volume and increasing in zebra mussels that that really sped up the clear clearing of the water and the clarity and you know there's places like this you know when you look at it with polarized glasses you can see that uh, it almost looks tropical it's so clear so let's go to the next location I'll show you where they continue to release water for the folks down there in Dallas to water their yards and basically use water like there's no limit to the supply. And that's just, this is kind of the situation we get when people actually, you know, our, our government, our state government bases all their, all of their uh, policies on continuing, continuing the, the supply of water and not paying attention to demand and, and controlling demand of water and enticing people to use less water by raising the price of water. All right, let's go to the next location. So what we have here is the Elm Fork of the Trinity River, and this is what continues the chain of lakes to make up the Trinity River Basin. No matter what time of year it is, the water is always flowing out of Lake Ray Roberts. There's the dam right there behind the camera, and it flows down, around, and down to Louisville Lake, or some people call it, you know, interchangeably Lake Dallas, Louisville Lake. And so this is the link in the chain, and. It doesn't really bother me that uh, the water is flowing because if you shut it off, this would dry up. You can't shut it off. But what bothers me and a lot of other people who can consider and are concerned about conservation is what happens to this water once it leaves here. Of course, it's drinking water for locally here in, in Denton, Texas. 
and also it goes all the way down to Louisville where it becomes water for yards wasted on so many different things and uh, in the larger parts of the Metroplex parts larger than Denton Texas and so it's kind of disturbing to see all this water going to where we you know a huge percentage of it goes to waste um, and that's the way it's going to be as long as Texas focuses on supply rather than controlling demand. There it is. I'll tell you, here's a little fishing tip for you. It may never happen again, but if you look back at the old YouTube videos of catching, uh, of catching hybrid bass, that fence right there, if that fence is ever underwater, that's where you want to fish. If the water touches or is up above that fence, the hybrid action is on and it is a blast. I caught a 10 pound state record there way back in 2010, I think it was, uh, maybe longer than that ago. And unfortunately, uh, the person who documented it for me, we didn't get the photographs, so uh, that went to waste. That was really a fun fight. Of course, you know, when the hybrids are up, it's a blast around here, but uh, that doesn't look like that's in the forecast anytime soon. We'd have to have uh, biblical rains this spring to trigger something like that. Thanks for watching this episode. This was Water Wednesday. We're early February 2015. And if you like what you see, please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Always, if you're a lover of the written word like I am, there's always a website, www.texasplycaster.com. You'll find a lot more information about the things we talk about in our videos.